Hey guys, I'm Jonathan. Welcome to this new video. We will learn how to do this. Just before starting the video, I wanted to tell you that you can download the source file. The link is in the description. If you discover this channel, I currently publish 2-3 to three videos per week related to filmmaking, advertising video, and 3D. With Cinema 4D, Blender and Houdini. So, if you are interested with these subjects, don't hesitate to subscribe. I thank in advance all the people who like, comment and share my videos. You know it helped me a lot. If you want to have help, you can join the Discord server and the Facebook group. The links are in description. We don't waste any more time. If you are ready, let's go. So here if you look at the final project you can see that I have a main composition, with two compositions inside. The first menu right here and the second menu which is right there. Then I have an effect layer here with my colorimetry effects and I finally have a camera here because suddenly my two compositions here are in 3D in order to make the transition here from left to right between the two menus. So if you don't know at all how 3D works on After Effects, I made a video on the channel I'll put it at the top of the screen and invite you to go see it before continuing this video if you ever don't don't know how it works at all. So then here if we look at the first composition of the first menu we can see that we simply have PNG images with a floor and a wall that I got on the internet. Then we have an animation of text here an animation with the arrow at this level. And the price here with a text animation and finally the second composition we have exactly the same thing so a floor and a wall. We have fairly simple text animations. Here the pigments for the chili sauce and the, the images of flames here in the background to recall the spicy sauce of burgers. So it's something that is invented from a disease. It's not for a real restaurant, obviously. Then here, as before, we have a little text animation for the price. The shadows that have been added. So that's about it. So we're going to start over from the beginning, and as usual, you have the file. Source in description if you want to retrieve the images to follow the tutorial from it as you can download all the images in the description. I'm going to open a new project and we're going to start all over again from scratch. So here I opened a new project. The first thing I want to do is I create a new composition. I'm going to click here on new composition. I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to leave it at 30 frames per second at the duration level I put on 130 frames. So I'm also going to fame main. I'm going to do okay to create this composition. Here in my project panel, I'm already going to be able to start by organizing all the files a little bit so there I'm going to right click and new folder and I'm going to call it images. So all the images I'm going to import and I'm making a new folder and I'm going to call it compositions which will be all the compositions I'm going to create so here in this little animation there will only be three compositions. So then my main composition I'm going to put it in the composition folder and then I could indirectly create my first composition so there I right click new compositions. And this time this one I'm going to call it banger so it will be the first menu. So there in terms of duration I'm going to put 120 images and do OK. So there I'm going to take my banger composition I'm going to put it in the composition folder so there I'm going to do a double click to be able to import my images and I'm going to import my images that are in my folder and I'm already going to start by importing the floor and the wall so the only one is a wood texture. And the wall is a texture that is a little cracked so here I'm going to take these two images with shift and I open to import them here in my project I will put them directly in my images folder and there I will be able to take these two images and I will drag them into my banger composition right here so then here I will put myself 100% and I'm going to resize these images to be about comp size so here I'm hitting S and I'm going to reduce the size for now I'm going to leave it like this. About 52 and the same for the ground I will R reduce a bit. And so here I am going to place these images in 3D to be able to position them correctly to create a floor and create a wall precisely. So here to put them in 3D I will select them so with shift I select both and I press the small cube to be able to put them in 3D. So there at first I came to hide the wall and we're going to take care of the floor so there I'm going to take my rotation on the X axis and I put my floor roughly like this I think I'm going to put. About 80 degrees isn't bad and I'm going to take it down to the bottom of my composition. And there you can see that suddenly it doesn't take up the whole composition here on the left and on the right so here I'm going to go on my floor. I press S and I'm going to enlarge it a little bit so that it takes the whole width of my composition so then I take my wall I'm going to make it visible just here and there I want to put in two views. So basically we are on a view I put two horizontal views. And so here we are in top view so there I will select my wall and I will push a little bit backwards like that on the Z axis. We can see that the wood texture ends right here at the dotted line so I'm going to put it right after almost glued but a little behind.
and so there we're going to raise it a little bit on Y and we'll be able to change its scale so then I'm going to press S. I'm going to get back to a view here and we'll be able to adjust its size so that it takes up the whole composition so I'm going to leave it like that. Here's 70% so once we've done that the idea is going to be to come and get our food. So here I'm going to double click. I'm going to look in my file. We have this burger in PNG, we have the bag of fries and the glass of coke in PNG too. So here I'm going to open, I'm going to put all the images in the images folder and I take these images. I'm going to put them here in my composition and so there I can come here and change the color of the layer. So the default is purple. I'm going to put them in red like I know that in red it will be my food and in purple here it will be the floor and the wall so that way we stay organized. There I will start by hiding the coke and the fries and I will take the burger here and I will try to position it correctly in terms of my composition. So here I press it on S. I reduce its scale a little bit. And here I'm going to reposition it at the level of the location so I'm going to put it roughly at that level there so roughly in the center of the composition. I'm going to maybe enlarge it a little. I'm going to leave it at 85% at the level of the scale. Then I'm going to make the fries visible here I press S. I'm going to reduce the size and I'm going to position them correctly so there I put the fries well below the burger to be able to hide them a little bit behind the burger. I think I put the size at 30%. And finally I'm going to make a glass of coke visible so there I'm going to put it behind the fries so below here at the layer tree level. And there. The same thing I press S and this time I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. I think I'm going to put 140% and I'm going to put here behind the fries so roughly at that level there so here what we need to do is add a little bit of shadow on our objects because this is really very unrealistic. To do that we're going to right click, new shape layer, and we're going to select here the circle at the level of the objects. So here I take an ellipse tool but I'm going to make an ellipse roughly the size of the burger like this. At the color level I will put a pure black so here only zeros at the code level. I'm going to do OK and here with the V key. I'm going to reposition my number and I'm going to put it here below the burger which is right there and so there I'm going to be able to do a little rotation at the level of my ellipses so I press R and I'm going to rotate it 2 degrees. That looks good to me and there I'm going to come into my effects. And I'm taking a Gaussian blur effect and I'm going to put it here on my shadow. And there on the blur I think I'll put it at 50. I'll see what happens. OK, and I'll be able to change if I need the opacity. So here I press T I'll decrease the opacity maybe to 90. I think that's good. And I'll reduce the blur a little bit instead of 50 I put 35. So OK we already have our first shadow. So the idea is to do the same for the fries. So here I'm going to right click then new and shape layer. This time I'm not going to take a predefined shape. But I take the pen and I'm going to draw a shape that will take the shape of the box of fries. I will be able to hide the burger and hide our shadow here. I'm going to draw a shape that will take the shape of the box of fries. And so here I'm going to make a rectangle more or less like this. And so they're like earlier. I just place this shadow under the box of fries. And I take the Gaussian blur effect I put the blur at 35 and I'm going to change the opacity. So I press on T here. And I'll put it at 90%. The glass we don't need to add a shadow because we can't see the underside of the glass so here it will be very good like that. If you want you can rename the shadows here to stay organized. I will select them and I will put them in red so that it is associated with the foods in our composition. Then I can add my camera so I'm going to right click then new and camera like that we're going to add depth of field so there I'm going to leave the 50mm preset. I'll make the settings right after. So here I'm going to put my burger in 3D, the fries in 3D, and the coke in 3D by clicking on the little cube. Then I put myself in horizontal view and I put myself in top view and then I'm going to come and make adjustments at the camera level so there I'm going to go to camera options and so I here I'm going to change the aperture to be able to add blur and depth of field. I'm going to put around 525 here at the open. So here at the level of the camera we can see that the focus distance is not in the right place since the burger is blurred.
We want to put the focus distance perfectly at the level of the burger so there if I select the burger we can see on the 3D plan that it is at the level of the red line here. And at the level of the camera we can see that the focus and at the level of the pink line right here. So I will come and move it back a little little. To do that, I'm going to go into focus distance here and I'm going to decrease that value to put it center stage so there we have the burger which is perfectly sharp. I put myself on one view and you can see that the shot scene is perfectly fine. I'm going to add a little bit of smoke to the back like the original video so I'm going to go here to project I double click and I'm going to come get my smoke video so here it's on a black background so I'm going to select it I'm going to put it here in the image folder. I'm going to take the video and I'm going to put it here under the Coca-Cola and I'm putting this 3D video here with the cube. I'm going to two horizontal views and this time I'm going to put it between the floor and the wall. Okay I'm going to one view here and I'm going to change its scale. So I press S. And this time I'm going to enlarge it so I'm going to put from where you start to see the smoke. Then what you have to do is change the blending mode so here instead of normal we're going to put it in screen and so like that the smoke is superimposed on the background that we just added before then. If you want, you can also adjust the opacity a little bit. So you press T. We can perhaps decrease a little the game will set to 85% instead of 100% to prevent the smoke from coming out too much at the level of our image here so then here it only remains to add the text and animate everything. So there I'm going to start already by adding the text so I'm going to right click then new and text here I'm going to put one. I select my text at the font level it's Bulby 1SC. So you can find it on the internet for free here. I put the color in white and at the size level I'm going to enlarge it to 300 I think it will be good. And here I'm going to come and move this layer. And I'm going to put it here about that level. Then I'm going to come over and add a drop shadow. So here I go into my effects I take some drop shadow effect. And I come here put it on the text. And there I mean change the distance so I set it to 15 and the smoothing to 10. So that's how we have a little depth effect in our font. And it adds a 3D effect to our composition. So then I'm going to come and duplicate this layer so I'm going to do Ctrl D and I'm going to come and rename it I'm going to call it Menu. And I'm going to reposition it with my Move tool. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to reduce its size. I'm going to put it at 120 it seems good to me in terms of size. And finally I'm going to duplicate a second time so Ctrl D. And this time I'm going to rename it again and there I put the name of the menu so there you call it what you want. And again I'm going to change its size I will put it 175. I think it will be not bad. So there this text we are going to come and change the color and I am going to put a slightly orange yellow so there I am going in my colors and I am looking for an orange. Okay, if you want you can also add a gradient at the text level as well. Just look in the effects. The gradient effect. You have either four color gradient or range of gradients with two colors. I'm going to duplicate this text again so Ctrl D. I'm going to double click on it and this time I'm going to put the price so I put $8.99. I'm going here with my transform effect I'm going to place this text roughly at this level there. I'm going to double click on it and change its size a little bit I think I'm going to decrease it to 125. So there at the level of my layers. I'm going to keep my camera above I'm going to select all my texts here I want to change the color and I want to put this time in blue so that way I know that my blue layers will be all my text. Then I'm going to add the last text about the sauce. So here I'm going to duplicate this text there I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in vegan sauce. And so there like before, I'm going to double click and change the font. It's Blanchop. So here I put my text in white I'm going to use an off white here. And I just changed the height so that the sauce is a little closer to vegan here without it touching.
I'm going to move my text right here and I'm going to rotate it really very slightly so I press R and I'm going to rotate it minus 30 degrees. So here we just have to do the animation of the arrow, of which you can also find arrows that are already animated surely on the internet and use the same technique as earlier with the image of smoke by putting the blend mode to screen, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna animate it ourselves. So for that I'm going to right click then new and shape layer I'm going to take my pen here. The background I put it in transparent so I press alt and I click until I have here the transparency effect I put the outline in white, and I put the thickness at 15 so there I'm going to draw a curve which will serve as a base for my arrows. I'm going to put a first point here and a second point roughly at this level there. So then at the level of my curve that I have just traced, I will put here reduce the traces. This is what will allow to add animation at the level of the curve. Then here I select my curve that I drew. So I'm going to go here unfold the layer. I go to shape I go to trace. I select the path here so you have to select it then you have to go to window then create null from path so it will create a null object from the curve. Then you have to do here draw the path so that's where it just created a null object on my curve. If we move forward in the timeline, we can see that our null object is animated. So that's exactly what we want and so then we'll go to reduce paths and the effect that we added. I'm going to go into end and I'm going to come bind it on the null object so I'm going to go into effect trace the path and which here in progress then I'm going to link the end here on progress so is there like that we will have our curve which animated with the null object. We're going to create the tip of our arrow. So here I'm going to right click then new shape layer I want to go here select the stars tool. I'm going to go to options and put poly star. I'm going to go to type and instead of stars I want to put polygon and at point I'm going to put 3 instead of 5. So we'll have a triangle. Then I'm going to add a color to this triangle. I'm going to add then background, instead of red I'm going to put in white like earlier. I'm going to be able to come and link this layer to the null object so I'm going to take here the main relationship I'm going to come and drag it onto the null is so there we have our triangle which is linked to our null object. So there we just have to come and reposition it so I'm going to go here at the level of the end of the animation. So at image 30 I'm going to move the triangle this time I'm going to rotate it so I press R. And I'm going to resize it so I press S and I'm going to reduce its size. I'm going to zoom to 400 and I'm going to reposition it right at the end of my arrow here. And so there I'm going to be able to add a little bit of roundness to this triangle. I'm going to go here to unfold my layer. I'm going to go to content is here in external rounding we're going to put 60%. And we're going to do the same here for the curve. So I'm going to unfold my curve. I'm going to go to contents and outlines. And here I put rounded ends and I put rounded tops. And so there we must not forget at the level of the null object to deactivate the loop so there by default it is on yes. And therefore it is enough to click to put on no. So that we will have just one animation. So here if we put it back on adjusted we can see that we have our arrow animation. However we would have to do an animation at the level of the size of the end of the arrow. So here I'm going to put the image of 30. I'm going to go to my triangle here I press S and I put an image created at 0 for the size. And so here I just selected these two keyframes and I'm going to create a curve. I'm going to use the motion 3 plugin with the curve presets. And I'm going to use this curve here 8724 and I'm doing the exact same thing for the null object. So I open my keyframes and there you can do F9 to smooth the keyframes. But I'm going to take the same curve on motion 3. There I just make some adjustments to my keyframes. So here it is like earlier. 
I have selected the three layers and I'm going to change the color and this time I'm going to put it in green. And I'm going to keep my camera here above and add one last thing. It was the text scratch effect so I'm going to go back to my project panel. And I'm going to select my image. And suddenly it was this one. I'm going to have it opened. I'm going to put it here in my file image I. And I place it below my text. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to change the scale because it's small there. I'm going to come and change its position. I'm going to put it at the level of the text. And so here I'm going to take the fill effect. And I'm going to put it here on my image. And I'm going to put it in red. Then we're going to change the blending mode here. I put hard light and I just changed the transparency here with T at 20%. So then we just have to do the animation. So here I just select all my layers up to the food. So I select the first one here. I press shift until the scratch image and I just the hide with the little eye. I'm going to add a null object, so I'm going to right-click, then new null objects. I take my null object, and I'm going to put it above the burger is so there I can select all my food here. I'm going to take the link from related. I'm going to put them on the null is so there I'm going to take my null object. I'm going to go to frame 40. I'm going to go to position. I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm going to go to frame 0. And I'm going to change the position right here. I'm going to put them off my screen. So okay. And there you can come and adjust the curves. And if you press play we can see that we have an animation. You can also add scale animations on the food so on the burger for example me that's what I did on my animation final. I'm not going to do it here because it would take too long for in the end not much. Then I'm going to be able to make visible all the layers that I had hidden and so I'm going to press on the eye here. I take all my layers which concerns the white text here with the animation of arrows. So I select them and here I will drag them to frame 60 like that the animation will be done from frame 60 so then I will be able add animation to my text so here I'm going to take a preset for the word banger I'll put the setting in source file link if you're ever interested. So here I would take jump character over banger and if we advance in the timeline we can see that the word is written when the food starts to advance so that's perfect I'm going to leave it like that and there I'm going to add some of the variation. Transparency at level 1 and the menu so I select a menu I press T I'm going to go here to opacity. I'm going to set 0% then I'm going to go to image 15 and I put L opacity at 100%. I'm going to add another knock effect for the price so this time I'm indeed a little bit blinking. And finally last thing we can animate here the scratch in red so I'm going to go and select my image. I'm going to press S. I'm going to unlink these two values I'm going to go to frame 30. I'm going to place a key image here. I'm going to change the origin of my anchor point here so I'm going to select the anchor point tool which is right there. I select I put it on the left about this level there and there I'm going to scale that on one side so here it is more or less like these here and there I'm going to set it to zero and so if we look at the animation we can see that we have an animation that follows our text. So now we can go back to our main composition. We go to project, we go to our composition folder, and we take the banger composition, and we put it inside our main composition, and so there we already have our first composition which is finished, so there is more than to make the second animation. So then for the second composition session it will be almost the same thing so I pass rather quickly. So here we're going to create a new composition so I'm going to right click new compositions 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. I'm going to call it menu 2. 
I'm putting the composition in the composition folder is here so I'm going to my composition I'm going to go here to get my images so it's another floor. And another another wall. I'm going put these two images in the image folder and I'm going to select them and I'm going to put them here in my composition like later I'm going to put them in 3D I'm going to hide the wall for now I'll take care from the ground so on. Going to do a rotation on the X axis. Then I'm going to take the wall here I'm going to make it visible I'm going to go to two horizontal views I'm going to put it at the end here of my composition. I'm going to scale it up if needed, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Here I can see going back to my first composition I'm going to copy the camera and I'm going to paste it here it will be the exact same camera so okay. And then here I'm going to come get my images of the other two burgers. I'm going to do exactly as before so I'm going to speed up a little little video. But the principle is exactly the same. Then I'm going to come and copy the text I take the text menu. I'm going to replace with fish and chicken. I'm going to put this text behind my burgers. I'm going to copy the color of the banger here so I'm going to go over here and copy the code there and I'm going to paste it over my text to get the same color. I'm going to create a new shape layer. I'm going to take the rounded rectangle here. I'm going to put myself at this level. I'll put a very, very light green at the bottom. I'm going to create a new text new then I'm going to select it and I'm going to position it here at my green label and I just want to reduce it a little bit I'm going to put 120 it will be more than enough. I'm going to change its color. I'm going to come and select the pipette here I put the same color as at this level there and I want to go into saturation I'm going to decrease the situation a little bit and increase the luminance a little bit. We have our second scene which was created really very quickly so then here you can also animate it so exactly like earlier you can animate the burgers. You can animate the text. You can animate here the little animation with the null object. And then if you go to the main composition, you have here in the project panel and you will select your menu and put it below the banger composition. Then we add a camera with a new right click and cameras right here. Okay, we have to put the two compositions in 3D. And put the camera above and here at the level of banger we will go between the superposition here we will put a keyframe on the position so I press P I put a key right here I go to frame 210 and I'm going to put my keyframe so that the composition makes a movement on the right. Here I'm going to do the opposite with this composition so I put a keyframe here on position. And then I'm going to go to frame 110 and I'm going to move the composition to the left.
And so there too we click on play at the level of the transition. We can see that we have a slide between the two compositions with our 3D on After Effects. So then you can add right click some of the new facts, some of the facts here you put it above the two compositions, and there you just add your colorimetric effect. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe and share to support my work. I see you next time, bye.